give you my wealth. Whenever it's needed. As long as you promise. To never mistreat it. Take care of your debts. Take care of your house. Take care of your children. Take care of your spouse. Use some of the wealth. To build your community. No village divided. We need it in unity. So never belittle. The ones that's around you. And always remember. Where you were when I found you. What you gain today. You can lose tomorrow. Help those in need. Pay back what you borrow. Some of the wealth. Is to go to your health. But whatever is left. You can have for yourself. No matter what country, religious background, nationality, or culture we belong to, each one of us is familiar with the word wealth. When most of us think of the word wealth, we think of physical gain. Truth is, physical gain is just one part of wealth. The other part of wealth is spiritual gain. Spiritual gain is not something that most of us think about when we think of the word wealth. So what's the difference between the two? Your physical wealth are things that you gain, such as accumulated currency, assets you own, and luxuries you build. Your spiritual wealth is the love you receive, the relationships you build, and the lives you impact. You may hear some religions say, it's better to give than to receive. Think of spiritual wealth as giving and physical wealth as receiving. Giving and receiving are two sides of the same coin. For someone to give, someone has to receive. For someone to receive, someone has to give. Your spiritual wealth and physical wealth are both connected to you. Your spiritual wealth is what's gained on the inside of you. Your physical wealth is what's gained on the outside of you. Your physical wealth is a reflection of your spiritual wealth. What's created on the inside will show on the outside. Your knowledge, skills, and wisdom are all spiritual gains. There's an old saying that goes, your ideas turn into thoughts, your thoughts turn into feelings, your feelings turn into action, your actions turn into results. The results are the manifestations added to your physical gains. Physical wealth cannot be created without spiritual wealth. When you're one with your Ajay energy, your spiritual and physical wealth becomes balanced. The Ajay within you attracts abundance like a magnet. The magnetic attraction becomes activated when your thoughts are in line with your intentions. If your thoughts and intentions are to gain physical wealth by committing fraud, that's considered stealing. Stealing from Ajay will result in her taking her wealth back with interest. You may gain it fast, but you'll lose it fast. Losing it fast doesn't necessarily mean you'll lose it right away. You may enjoy the fruits of her wealth for many years, but the day she comes knocking on that door, she's taking her wealth back. The interest that's owed for stealing her wealth could be jail time, losing your home, or becoming hungry with rabbit ear pockets. If your thoughts and intentions are to gain physical wealth out of honesty and integrity, that's considered honorable. Your spiritual wealth cup has to fill up until it runs over and pours into the physical wealth cup. This process doesn't happen overnight. It takes time and patience. Lessons will have to be learned to teach you how to manage her abundance. Once you become the right person, her abundance will stay with you forever. You'll then know when to give and when to receive. You'll also know how to use, create, and distribute her wealth. Now that you're more familiar with your Ajay energy, let's go over spiritual wealth and physical wealth. Let's first start off with spiritual wealth. Let's say you grew up suffering from low self-esteem. You didn't fit in with the popular kids and your confidence was too low for dating. You often refer to yourself as a nobody. And to no surprise, your peers treated you like you're a nobody. The reason this is happening is because your inner wealth is low. The way you see yourself 
is the reflection you give off for others to see you as well. Since you see yourself as a nobody, everyone around you will see you the same way. The image that you're painting of yourself is the presentation you're presenting for everyone to see. The behavior continued until you reached the age of 16. One of the popular kids was throwing a party and you weren't invited. It's not a surprise because it happened several times before, but this time felt different. A feeling came over you to where you said, enough is enough. While your peers are enjoying the party you weren't invited to, you're stuck sitting home on a Friday night with a lot to think about. You ask yourself, what makes them better than you? As you look for an answer, you can't seem to find one. It was at that moment when your spiritual wealth began to increase. You now realize you were trying to fit in instead of being yourself. When Monday morning came, you entered the school with a new attitude. Your walk is different, your head is held high, and your confidence has risen. There's a change in your attitude and your peers can't help but notice. Now when your teacher calls on you for an answer, you answer loud and confidently. You also begin to speak up for yourself. A lot of heads begin to turn because they never seen the side of you. They certainly never heard that loud confident voice, which is your real voice. Over the weeks, all the talk and attention have been on you. All your peers, including your teachers, are curious to where this new confidence has come from. The attention you received from them started off as them being nosy, but now everyone is taking a liking towards you. They now got to meet the real you. To your surprise, you find out that it wasn't that they didn't like you, but they didn't know what to say to you. They figured if you didn't talk much or interact much, that you didn't want to be bothered. That was the reflection you were showing everyone. So now that you have gained much spiritual wealth, the situation around you have changed in a short period of time. From this point on, over the years, you will go on to build many relationships and friendships. You've been invited to many parties and you participate in multiple activities. Now that you're older, every time you see someone with the same low self-esteem you once had, you don't hesitate to talk to them. You now help people that's going through the same thing you've been through. Ever since you gained the spiritual wealth, you have no desire to go back to being the person you once were. Now let's talk about how your spiritual wealth helped accumulate physical wealth. It's now been 10 years since you gained your spiritual wealth. Your marriage is great. The relationships you have with your children is great. Your friendships are great. And you love what you do for a living. You're winning in every category. You maintain your spiritual wealth for 10 years and Ajay feels you are now the right person to maintain her physical wealth. For some time now, you've been speaking to groups of teenagers that's been going through low self-esteem. You also started a social media channel dedicated to helping those in need of gaining confidence. Out of nowhere, on a Tuesday night, before you were about to go to bed, you received a mysterious email. The person who sent the message explained they've seen your work on social media and they're interested in having you speak at one of their venues. The pay that they're offering you is more money than you've ever seen in one time, especially for 30 minutes worth of work. This also includes a first class airfare and a luxury hotel suite for you and your family. After massive research to check to see if it was a scam, to your surprise, you found out that it's legit. So the next day, you spoke with the person in charge. Everything went well, and you happily accepted their offer. A few days before the event, a driver picks up you and your family and takes you to the airport. For the first time in your life, you're flying first class. You also notice the excitement on your children's face for this is the first time they've ever been on an airplane. As you arrive, another driver carries you and your family to your hotel suite. This is the biggest, most luxurious hotel room you've ever stayed in in your life. As you experience this moment with your family, thoughts are flowing through your head. The joy on their faces makes you ask yourself this question. 
how can I make this our new lifestyle? The next morning, you meet with the people who are in charge of the event and also with the other speakers that will be speaking. They give you advice and welcome you with open arms. You have two days before your big moment on stage. You prepare and rehearse like your life depends on it. The room service, free food, and activities that your family are enjoying is now your new motivation. You tasted this lifestyle and now you want it permanently. The day came as you hit the stage, your family and a whole arena of people are watching you. You took one look at your family, thought about your current lifestyle, and then proceeded to give the best motivational speech of the night. You poured out your spiritual wealth and it left an impact on your audience. The IJ within you noticed how your spiritual wealth impacted so many people. She also noticed that the words you were speaking were coming straight from the heart. Before you took the stage, no one knew who you were. After taking the stage, people wanted to shake your hands and take pictures with you. Before leaving the venue to head back home the next morning, you've been offered four more speaking venues and one of them is out of the country. You've accepted the offers and as the years went by, you became one of the most requested motivational speakers of your generation. The low self-esteem you started off with is what led you to this lifestyle. It gave you something to talk about in your story. Since you could relate, you were able to help people overcome low self-esteem. This process didn't happen overnight. Once your spiritual wealth and physical wealth became balanced, you became the right person to handle Ajay's wealth.